Let's talk about subgroups of patients. Um, Paul, do you want to talk about patients with bone and brain metastases? Certainly. So um, th there are two difficult to treat patient groups, I think. I mean, the first thing to say is that we often see bone as a primary site of progressive disease in a patient who otherwise is having visceral control on a TKI. And um, what exactly it is about bone microenvironment or drug pharmacokinetics, we, we're unsure about. Certainly the bone microenvironment is different and maybe may be doing something to the tumour that makes it less susceptible to TKIs. So in a situation where somebody is getting visceral benefit from their TKI, but perhaps you're seeing bony progression, what we tend not to do is to stop the TKI, but we will actively try and get local control of the bony disease, particularly if it's symptomatic. Um, and so that in, would generally use radiotherapy and, and bisphosphonates um, or other anti-bone agents. Um, so, so, and then we would try to tease out as much value from their TKI before having to switch. There are a small group of patients who, um, who, who get significant bony progression um, and they become very symptomatic and local control, local therapies don't palliate their symptoms adequately and one needs to change to alternative systemic uh, treatments if, if one can. And I should also say that we know that bone is a poor prognostic site of disease. So these patients are often quite symptomatic mm -hmm. and, and don't do well long term. But uh, I wouldn't stop, the message is I wouldn't stop a TKI simply because you've got limited bony progression. Uh, um, I think brain, I think is, um, I think our management of brain disease is changing. The first thing to say is as a melanoma doctor, we've learned over the years to be much more aggressive in management of brain metastases. So we survey our melanoma patients for brain metastases because we want to allow use of immunotherapeutic agents later. And I wouldn't be surprised if the renal community ends up moving this, uh, to a similar place over the next few, few years. Um, but with, um, uh, with earlier detection of oligometastatic brain disease, and using radical therapies, whether it's surgery or, or stereotactic radiosurgery, we know that we can get long-term control in a subset of patients with brain disease if you go after the brain disease aggressively. Uh, and so that's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, in our patients with metastatic disease, when we are um, scanning them, we don't exclude brain. In my practice, uh, we used to only s image somebody's head if they were symptomatic. Mm -hmm. We, we don't do that anymore. We, for patients with metastatic kidney cancer, we always include brain because we want to detect metastatic disease in brain uh, before it becomes clinically uh, evident because, again, we can feel that for some patients we can, we, we can um, get intracranial disease control using radical therapies. There's no doubt that there are a group of patients who have multiple brain metastases who do benefit from systemic agents with uh, uh, with, with metastatic kidney cancer. Um, and so you can certainly use TKIs to palliate uh, those patients. Most of the patients who have been treated in that way from historical series had whole brain radiotherapy first. But there isn't a lot of data showing any difference between uh, radio, whole brain radiotherapy pre-treated patients and their benefit from TKIs compared to patients who are treated with TKIs only, and I think that's actually still an open question. Um, uh, but certainly systemic treatment has a place in the management of those patients. I'm surprised, Paul, that uh, in UK, uh, you, you know, your uh, uh, health agency uh, allows you to, uh, you know, order routinely amount of the brain on patients who are not, uh, who do not have uh, a neurological symptom uh, because in the U.S., uh, with a free market and, uh, uh, you know, we are getting pushbacks from insurance companies when we order MRI of the brain. For patients, I do not routinely order MRI of the brain on every patient unless they are uh, enrolling on a clinical trial and it's required by the clinical trial. But off protocol, I, I do not do it because we're getting denials for MRI of the brain if a patient has no neurological symptom and is neurologically intact. Mm -hmm. and, and for melanoma, I think it's even very different. Uh, I've done sure. studies with melanoma. If you do it at baseline and it's completely negative, normal uh, MRI or CAT scan, three months later, patients can have florid metastases. So the melanoma with 
at minimum 60% having symptomatic brain meds during their life is, is quite different. There's a preponderance to, to, um, it, it to is grow different. there. Yeah, it's very it is. different. So, so I was careful what I was advocating. So for our melanoma patients, and I know we're not really talking about melanoma, but for our melanoma patients, <laughs> we, we, uh, um, we, we include brain imaging for those patients on surveillance. Now, I, I'm not advocating that for kidney cancer because of the differences yeah, in prevalence difference. that you were saying. But I do think that for patients who've got you know, um, metastatic kidney cancer mm -hmm. and you're, you're treating them, uh, I think including brain, even if they're asymptomatic, is a value. You can argue about the frequency that you might want to do but that. Can I say so, so one, one other point? We were talking about keeping patients on surveillance who have got indolent disease. Of course, the disaster and we've all had patients mm -hmm. like this, are the handful yes. of patients who when they relapse, they relapse in CNS. Mm -hmm. So those are patients that you've been watching because they've got small volume disease, and then lo and behold, yeah, they end up having cord. That's or the only category that I'm worried about. The ones that you're not starting systemic treatment, you're afraid that they will develop micromets to the brains, they will grow out and maybe there will be a disaster. But in general, the patients on treatment, uh, they usually become symptomatic. They often have just one or two or three small lesions, which you can easily attack with stereotactic uh, radiotherapy or even surgery plus radiotherapy. So, so my experience with brain meds yeah. in kidney cancer is much, much more favorable yeah. as compared I to guess melanoma I guess just patients. to wrap the, 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 the re I agree with you about the majority. It's just the, the, the patients the, yeah. I'm concerned about are those who only become symptomatic when they've got disease that's of a large enough volume that you no longer have a radical treatment option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's a moving target. Yeah. As we prolong the life of these patients, uh, as in many other diseases right. in oncology, there is uh, appa the apparent perception that we're seeing more CNS compromise, mm -hmm. metastatic compromise, and this may be the I'm case. Sure right. I think that the data that we have, the hardest data that we have in terms of brain metastasis comes from the 5,000 expanded access study mm -hmm. uh, that was done with sunitinib uh, uh, about, uh, I think, uh, maybe 10 years ago or something of the sort, or the, at the end of last decade, where 7% of the patients actually had, uh, uh, had brain metastasis. That number, just that number, does not necessarily justify, uh, in, in our practice at least, screening patients that are asymptomatic in that regard. But I understand that as we are having patients that are surviving much longer, Okay, mm -hmm. that may become an important issue, and certainly yeah. clinical trials in that regard should be performed because certainly it's a very serious uh, mm -hmm. situation with very dear consequences in handling those. Yeah, I completely agree with that, and so uh, I, I personally don't uh, screen uh, the CT brain right away. But I think as our patients are living longer, maybe it does become an issue. And you know, targeted therapy, um, the treatment uh, of brain metastases and bone metastases, I've always found unsatisfactory. Uh, with targeted therapy. And so things like using SRS or Sabre um, and surgery uh, can be very helpful. Let's talk about...